Elsa briefly strengthening into a hurricane. Landfall uh, near Steen Hatchie in the next few hours. And making landfall in Florida. Breaking news this morning out of Haiti, where that nation's president was assassinated overnight. And a brother grieving in Surfside. This is the place where I can say here goodbye. And teaching the world about his sister. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Zitlali Solache. And I'm Danelle Dukin. Today is Wednesday, July 7th, 2021. From the South Florida Media Network's Biscayne Bay Studios in North Miami, this is SFMN Newsbreak. Tropical storm Elsa nearing landfall in Florida, leaving a trail of wind and heavy rainfall. Tropical storm Elsa is in the Gulf of Mexico, making its approach to western Florida, bringing heavy rain, threatening coastal flooding and power outages. Elsa's outer bands made their way throughout Manatee County, bringing waves and wind yesterday. In a news conference that just ended, Governor DeSantis alerting Floridians on what they may expect in the next few days. Uh, tornadoes remain possible across northeast Florida into this afternoon. Uh, the state EOC remains at a level one. After coming ashore in the Sunshine State, Elsa Center is expected to move towards Georgia today, South Carolina tomorrow, and then eventually lead towards the mid-Atlantic coast. Breaking news, the president of Haiti, Jovenel Moise, was assassinated inside his home in the early morning hours. Moise became Haiti's president in 2017 and passed at 53 years old. Haiti's prime minister confirmed that President Moise was killed in his private residence after a group attacked the home overnight. He also stated that Moise's wife was shot and is currently recovering from the wound. The people involved in the attack have not yet been identified. And rescue operations continue to face challenges battling Elsa storm conditions as the death toll rises. The network's Christopher Gomez has the latest on the Surfside coverage. Zitlali Danel, though heavy winds and lightning strikes slowed down rescue efforts, the search for survivors continues after the demolition of Champlain Towers. In a press conference yesterday, more disheartening news to report. We have recovered four additional victims. The number of confirmed deaths is now 36. After days of tireless searching, officials are unsure if anyone could still be alive under the rubble. There has been no indication of life under the tower in days. When asked if there was hope someone could still be alive, Fire Chief Alan Kaminsky isn't optimistic. The key things we're looking for uh, all throughout in regards to voice space, livable spaces, you know, we're not coming across that. Even with all this somber news, officials don't plan on slowing down the search anytime soon. First responders from all over the country and even the world have come to Surfside. They're here to assist in the search and they're not giving up. We're doing a lot of um, digging by hand, um, using tools and things like that. That's someone's family member. That's someone's, you know, mother, daughter, sister husband, wife. Meanwhile, a glimmer of hope coming from the mayor's office, as they're not sure all the missing were in the building. Champlain Towers was a summer home for many. Officials believe that some of the unaccounted for are simply away from their phones. Of that 113, only around 70 of those are people we have been able to confirm were in fact in the building during the collapse. Unfortunately, no other residents are expected to survive, but officials hope to beat the odds in their search. If you'd like to donate to the rescue efforts, visit www.supportsurfside.org. In the Control Center, Christopher Gomez, South Florida Media Network. Mourning the missing, families of the victims adding to the Surfside Memorial and continuing to share stories of their loved ones. Filled with flowers, photographs, and messages of hope, the Surfside Wall of Hope and Memorial continues to grow almost two weeks since the Champlain Towers South Condo building collapsed on June 24th. Holding back tears, Bernardo Camu Font adds a yellow poster board to the wall with pictures of his older sister, Gabriella. Lord, were you while Surfside was collapsing? Gabriella Camu Font is one of the many still missing since the collapse. 
Font traveled from Uruguay to say goodbye to his beloved sister and commemorate her life through photos, adding them to the ever-growing memorial in Surfside. Gabriela, um, it arises me the idea of coming here because uh, this is the place where I can say her goodbye. His voice breaks as he points to childhood pictures of moments they shared together. Font talks to his sister out loud, saying, She's hearing me. I know she's hearing me. Pray for me. The memorial is meant to honor the victims of the tragedy and those unaccounted for, as more than 100 residents remain missing. Some families are holding on to hope, while others think they are running out of time, as search and rescue crews continue their efforts. The search for a missing six-year-old boy in Panama City Beach has come to an unfortunate end. The body of Enrique Cortez Dubon was found in the Gulf of Mexico yesterday. The six-year-old was reported missing on Monday after he was last seen in knee-deep water without a life vest. Officials do not blame the parents and say this was just a tragic accident. A ship rescued two people off the coast of Key West before calling for help as a large group of people are still out at sea. This happened yesterday as the Coast Guard showed up and rescued 13 others. The Coast Guard believes nine are still missing and the search continues while Tropical Storm Elsa moves along Florida's coast. A wild ending as the Marlins hosted the defending World Series champions last night. If you didn't stay up to catch the end of this one, you'll want to see it. That's still ahead and so is this story. If you are vaccinated, what is the likelihood that you could still be infected with COVID-19 because of this more contagious Delta variant? With Delta variant on the rise, will all of those Independence Weekend gatherings lead to a summer spike? News break will be back in two minutes. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back and change, I go back and change it all. If I could go back. I would. But I can't. When you adopt a shelter pet, you discover all the things that make them unique. And your mother and... I am totally a hot person. Right, guys? Thanks for being honest. They're a little bit of a lot of things, but they're all pure love. Adopt pure love at theshelterpetproject.org. Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. It's really tall. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. Weekend travel and celebrations fueling the transmittable on the rise Delta variants for a summer surge. Today, health officials are concerned that large gatherings over the holiday weekend could be what they call variant breeding grounds. Health officials are waiting to see if large weekend gatherings directly contribute to another rise in cases in the next couple weeks. I think this raises questions that the CDC really needs to answer. So, for example, what is the true rate of breakthrough infections? So if you are vaccinated, what is the likelihood that you could still be infected with COVID-19 because of this more contagious Delta variant? Dr. Liana Wen 
says states with low vaccination rates are beginning to have spikes over the Delta variant. This includes Arkansas, Missouri and Wyoming. So far, 47% of people in the U.S. are fully vaccinated. Miami Marlins fans are celebrating this morning after a huge victory against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Catcher Will Smith leads to victory as the game ended with a passing error in the 10th inning, finishing the game with a close score of 2-1. The Marlins and Dodgers will play again today for Game 5th here in Miami. That's all the time we have for news. I'm Zitlali Solache. And I'm Danelle Dukin. Get more news anytime at sfmn.fiu.edu.